Uh, we absolutely love this segment on the show. Why? Because one of my favorite human beings who always leaves me with so much to think about after these sessions, John Weltman, is back to talk about space tourism. SpaceX, um, it's been a while since we've heard from them with these new planets and the possibility of life dominating the, the space headlines, while well, universal headlines. Um, but, but where are we with SpaceX at the moment? It's, it's been such an amazing week, hasn't it, with these, these seven new planets? But SpaceX's announcement on Monday kind of stole the show, didn't it? And um, they basically announced that they're sending two civilians on a trip around the moon and back again, paying customers. <laughs> I was going to ask, what, what, um, do you know the price tag? Well, yeah, well, <laughs> th that's what I'm here to discuss, actually. But, but the, you know, let's, let's start with the mission. The mission is to, is to get into deep space for the first time in 45 years. Um, uh, this is actually causing a bit of a race with NASA. Even though NASA is their biggest client, they're not <laughs> delighted about this. And we need to do this. It's a stepping stone on the way to going to Mars. But the crew that they're going to send, and this will happen after the, the, the crew module has been tested after two ISS missions, okay. um, is, is going to be a civilian crew. And they're going to spend a week in space, travel about 650,000 kilometers, slingshot around the, the moon, but on a much longer um, trajectory than we've ever been before. So we can also get some data about what happens to the Dragon crew module and to humans well, in deep space. In, in your kind of intuitively speaking, what do you think they're going to experience out there? How, how different is this to what we've seen in the past in terms of manned flights in, in space? Yeah, I, I mean, the, re the real significant thing about this is um, even though we haven't been to deep space in 45 years, we are now in a position where civilians can afford to go. Okay, um, to give you an idea, it cost about, in today's terms, 3.8, so let's call it 40, 45 billion rand, to send each Apollo astronaut in the 11 wow. Apollo missions. Um, Elon won't tell us exactly how much this crew has paid. He won't tell us who they are until they've passed the physicals. Okay. They've paid a substantial deposit. How, how much do you think? There are backup <laughs> crews, and he has given us a clue. He has said it will be in the region of or a little bit more than it costs right now to send an astronaut to the space station. Okay. So the US is paying Russia $80 million per seat on Soyuz. The uh, SpaceX contract to deliver the first um, astronauts is about $72 million. So I would say these guys are probably paying $100 million a seat. Wow. That is 97.5% cheaper than it cost us in the 1970s and the late 1960s. That is insane. There. I mean, you know, just a couple of months ago, we were talking about n no opportunity for those that are traveling to Mars to return. Um, now we're talking about tourists in space. Where is this all going? What, what's the next big leap forward, do you think? Well, it, it, it is about access to space for, um, for you and I. And this is, this is what the privatization of the space um, industry is, has created. Right, the first and obvious opportunity for revenue is going to be tourism yeah. okay, for the very rich early adopters. But the end goal, and this is a stated mission of, of SpaceX, is to colonize Mars, is to give people an opportunity for a new start on a new planet at the cost of a house. Unreal. I can't believe this is happening in our lifetime. I said he always blows our minds, dude. Actually, my body's kind of gone lactic just thinking about those. How will humans stand up in space and where is it all going to lead? That was us going beyond the final frontier.